What are some things you have stopped apologizing for? Not being social. I do my best but I am just not a super outgoing person and that's okay. I used to get so upset with myself for not socializing with everyone or being the life of the party. I finally learned to accept that I just prefer gatherings of one to three person or alone time to large parties and that is totally fine. I feel so much better about myself. And if I feel bad for not spending enough time with someone at a party then I just hang out with them one on one later. Having a disability that impacts others. Even in small ways. For the longest time I apologized for existing. Especially when I inconvenienced my co-workers or family. And felt like the biggest burden to them because of my health. Sometimes I still do. But when I realize just how complex my conditions are and that it's not my fault for having them. I found myself actively trying to say sorry less. Instead of apologizing I express my thoughts and where my feelings of regret come from. But no apologies unless I did something terribly wrong or created a major issue out of carelessness. Basically everything about how I look and act. I don't owe anyone beauty, makeup, shaving, painted nails, styled hair, fashionable clothing. All of the things people expect of women as a baseline that are considered making an effort if you're a man. I also don't owe anyone supposed femininity, shyness, passivity, submission, surface level niceness, being endlessly tolerant and always willing to turn the other cheek. If men are allowed to be ugly, loud, stubborn, and opinionated then god damn it I am too. What is an American thing but Americans think everyone outside of America does it. Reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. It's alarming to me how many Americans I've met who think all countries do their own version of the pledge. It is a uniquely American thing. When I came to US from Canada to see a friend. After dinner when we were splitting the bill they asked if I could just Venmo it over. And then I told them we don't have Venmo. And then I saw the shocked Pikachu meme face around me. So I'm gonna say Venmo. My experience is that Americans don't often consider people outside of America. My American family are lovely people but they are insular patriots and they've never had a reason to think outside of America really. And to answer your question. Most of it is monetary assumptions. They were blown away that we don't tip everyone for everything. They were also surprised they knew the exact amount they were going to pay for something before they hit the till. The First Amendment. I just howled with laughter when some Canadian convoy protester claimed he had First Amendment rights. When the First Amendment in the Canadian Constitution actually provided for the government of Manitoba. Reading these comments and based on what I know about my own countrymen. I think non-Americans are under the impression that Americans think about non-Americans way more than we actually do. A lot of these are cultural difference they almost no American considers outside of our own context unless we are literally in another country. We're not chowing down on our fourth PB, J of the day and wondering what people in Croatia do when they're eating their PB, J. Tipping, I was in Spain. And an American family left a tip. Spanish staff were panicking. Thinking someone left money behind and ran down the street after them. When they got back to the restaurant they were so bewildered at the whole situation that they got our. And the next tables. Order wrong. I married a girl who had sex with my brother one time before we dated. I didn't know at first but she and I discussed it early on. Our whole friend group knows and has always known. No one shamed me but what did they say amongst themselves when I wasn't around? If it doesn't bother you. It doesn't matter. If you're around people that make you so anxious about something in your life that has zero impact on the it's then they're not worth being around. My buddy married a woman who had had relations with his brother years earlier. It wasn't anything serious. They have been married 13 years and have two beautiful children. It literally never comes up. In my decade plus of being their friend and confidant it has never been brought up as a topic of discussion. Your friend group might be a group of classless jackasses. But honestly. People are usually too wrapped up in their own BS to keep talking about this old news. Why would you be shamed? Is it the concept that she was impure by the time you married her? That's really old fashioned thinking. Based in a time when women were mostly considered property that could affect a man's status positively or negatively. People have sex. And most people have sex before they're married. If you start thinking of women as fellow human beings who make their own decisions about sex just like men do, you'll realize what you're worried about is not an issue. Maybe some of them care but really the only opinion that matters is yours. New friends are easy enough to come by if you don't like slash agree with whatever they say about you. Clearly to you it didn't matter. You found out ages ago but still kept dating her and got married FFS. If it was such a big deal, you shouldn't have married her and should have broken it off shortly after finding out. If the only thing that is affecting you know is thinking that your friends might think you're a loser behind your back. Then just get new ones. Or lay it out and let them know that you're not cool with them saying shit. Why is it racist to say two black people look the same but not when two white people look the same? There's a reason that a parent can tell their twins apart. Meanwhile someone else cannot. Familiarity. The more familiar you are with two people. The more you will realize about them. It's not always racism. And to insist that this is. Is a one-dimensional perspective. I once had an Asian grandma say. You all love the same. When she thought I was the associate looking for her shoes. I laughed my ass about and still do. They say everyone has a twin somewhere. I have a real twin though. But it's not racist to point put when two people of any race resemble each other bc some people just do even if they're total strangers. It happens. 
but it is racist to imply it simply because of their race. It's racist to say all white people or all black people look the same. Saying two people of one race look the same can imply the more broad statement depending on the context and your knowledge of the speaker's personal history. Probably because of history between the races. Either way it shouldn't be racist. Even I'm known to say a lot of Asian people look similar but I often back that up with similar body physiques and hairstyle slash color lead to a small variety of different appearances. In other words, ever see a K-pop band and try to tell the different members apart? People will always find a way to get mad at something. It's if you say all. But if two people look alike then two people look alike. I guess if the only thing they have in common is skin color then it'd be really bad but if they have the same haircut. A birthmark on the same side of their face. Same brow shape etc then I don't see an issue. As a Mexican. I've gotten my fair share of you look like, other Hispanic friend or celebrity, but it's never been unjust. I do know man. 